guys, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Violet with your host Matt of the Gaming Cabana. Uh, last time, we didn't do so good. But that's okay. We're gonna head back to the academy here. We're going to do the studies, because apparently they are very rewarding, yes. Alright, I think we can just talk to this guy and... First of all, lady. And second of all, I like the setup here. Good evening, Miss Meg. What class would you like to take? I think I will go through... Uh, let's go through... History. With Miss Rayfort. Sure, why not? Alright, let's go. Oh, I see we have some new students here with us today. Hey, I like your design. My name is Rayfort. I will be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. History is a wonderful thing, truly splendid. The lives of our ancestors throughout history forged the path to the present in which we live. Today you shall learn about the most mysterious location of all in Paldia, the Great Crater. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldia exists in the heart of our region. Long ago, an ancient warrior and his ragtag team of 12 individuals, including a giant man in a jar, defeated the Great Star General Radon. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. The area inside this crater is called Area Zero and its research of its geological strata and material composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. It was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of this crater. Aha! Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Meg. Answer me this. What exactly is believed to be there? It's supposed to be treasure. That's correct. You are surprisingly a clever one, aren't you? That's right. Some believe that a treasure more valuable than anything else in the world rested in the depths of the great crater. So much for dream, so much for dreams of treasure hunting though, as a lab has been built in those in those very same depths. It's off limits to anyone else except government types. You go there, you're gone. Do you hear me? You disappear. You never existed. It is no place for children. Ah, that means we're gonna be there. Besides, if it were all at all possible to investigate the area, I surely would have been the first to do so. True. And class is over. Uh, let's continue our history lesson. Let's see how far we can go with that. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under the rule of the Paldian Empire. Historical accounts describe the Paldian Emperor as being quite the dictator. This Emperor also zealously believed the legend of the treasure that rests deep within Area Zero. I must mention that the civilizations of our ancestors were not as developed as ours is today. People back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends, magic, and beings beyond human comprehension. Actually, Pokemon Arceus proved that everyone just blamed Pokemon. Like, if some weird phenomenon happened, oh, oh, ghost type did it! The Emperor sent people in droves to join the hunt for the fabled treasure of Area Zero. Oh, my turn again. Approximately how many years ago was it that the Paladin Empire began its rule? You said 2000, right? Ah, yes, you were seeing if I was caught sleeping, but I'm wide awake! My Sharigan eyes are wide open! I can see every last muscle of your fiber move! I can see the color of your chakra, and I know how to counter you! However, it is said that not a single adventurer set 
out by the Emperor ever reached the depths of Area Zero. <laughs> they got murdered. Was it the punishing journey itself that bar barred their way? Or perhaps some unknown creature? Maybe both. The resounding failure of this great era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air of mystery surrounding the crater. Oh, what I wouldn't give to explore Area Zero. Blah, blah, blah. I suppose I can only hope for the swift invention of a time machine. And that is the end of History 2. Alright. We are definitely going to continue our history class. However, I think I'm going to take this chance to introduce all the other teachers. So let's see all the other ones that this school has. Let's go to biology. Oh, we're done with history. We can't go to history anymore. Okay, so it's two class sessions, and that's that. Oh, it's Otacon. Hello, hello, my name's Jacques. I'll be your biology teacher. In my class, we all, we'll all all learn about the various quirks of our beloved Pokemon together. Hope you all come to love Pokemon even more from the things you learn here. In today's class, I'll teach you a great way to get to know Pokemon in more depth. If you'd like to become better friends with your Pokemon, you can let them come out of their Pokeballs and walk around with you. Nice. Press the ZR button. Nothing cuter than watching your Pokemon run around. Once you let your Pokemon out, try speaking to them. They'll respond in some way. It's a great way to get to them to know you. However, letting your Pokemon out of its ball isn't such a great idea in some locations. Can anyone tell me where it is that you shouldn't? Uh, inside buildings. That's right. Great job, Meg. I see you did your homework. The correct answer is that we should not walk with our Pokemon indoors. How about that? Meg's gonna try and do it anyway. Some Pokemon might damage walls, desks, and other things. So, be careful. Please only let your Pokemon outdoors, please. I think I see them out and about in classrooms from time to time, but still. Anyways, closer friends. Nice. Keep in mind that you can only walk together with your lead Pokemon. Remember, the ZR button. The ZR button. You pretty much, I guess this class just tells us what we pretty much already know at this point. Let's see, should we do another one or should we skip to another teacher? Yeah. They're breaking the rules! Well, I guess the rules mean nothing to you. Uh, you know what? Let's go to math. With Miss Time. What happened to Mr. Ad? I guess they got separated. They subtracted. <laughs> they subtracted their romance and divided their earnings. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name's Time, and I will be your math teacher. Sorry to put you all on the spot at the start of the class, but let me ask you a quick question. Quick maths! Do you enjoy number, arithmetic, and the like? Not really. Nomona, why are you here? You can't math, and you know it. Oh my, ha ha ha, thank you for your honest responses. Some of you may like numbers and some may not. I think that makes a wonderful mix. But no matter what your opinion is on math, I hope you find yourselves enjoying our lessons together. I'll do my best to find a way to match our interests. Speaking of which, are you all caught up on your studies of Pokemon match type ups? For example, grass is strong against water, and water is strong against fire, correct? Bearing in mind that water is strong against fire, if the water gun hits a fire-type Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? Uh, yeah, if it's super effective, it does double damage. Using moves of a type that your opponent is weak to is a super effective tactic. It's also the name of the game. It multiplies the damage of these moves by two. On the other hand, using multiples 
moves of a type that your opponent is resistant to isn't very effective. It divides the damage of your moves by two. Aha, I don't mean to encroach on Miss Dendra's battle studies territory, of course, but I thought it best be used as a lively type like as an example. That can make math fun. Yay, math fun. Class is over. Woo! What a shame. See you next time. Ha <laughs> ha, it's funny because her name is Time, but it's actually a mathematical pun and not a time one. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, let's try out Home Ek, and then Battle Studies. With Mr. Sagrow, Sagrow, I don't know that name. Zagaro? 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 Well, whoever he is, he is a chad of a man, and he's about to teach me the meaning of life. And judging by the way he's dressed, he's going to teach me through song. Your time here with me will be spent obtaining knowledge and skills indispensable for our daily life. Many of you left the care of your parents to live here on your own in the academy dormitory. I pray that the knowledge I will impart on you will help you live better lives. Of these three categories, I assume the most pressing and interesting for you all is food. When you eat sound bitches on your picnics, the HP of your party Pokemon will be restored. Restored? Restored? What? That's just a slip of the tongue. You will also gain something called meal powers, which will provide you with all sorts of benefits. You can boost... You can easily increase XP. We already went through this to the tutorial. It's a little weird that they make tutorials that give you these hints, and then they make an entire school event where you have to do this, and they give you the tips anyway. It's a little weird. What's more is there is a certain something that is particularly important if we wish to receive Mio powers with even more helpful effects. Let me see. Miss Meg, tell me. What is it? Uh, how fast my choice of fillings and condiments. I think that's it. Perfectly correct, Miss Meg. Perhaps you are already aware of this fact from having helped your family cook at home. Your choice of ingredients, including both fillings and condiments, is an important factor in gaining even more helpful meal powers. For example, using sweet ingredients in your sandwiches may help you gain egg power, including numerous bitter ingredients, on the other hand, can help you gain item drop power. Okay, that's interesting. Find out which ones work best for you and do accordingly. And buy recipes at restaurants. And ingredients. Can't make a sandwich if you don't got nothing. Alright, on to the next class, which is Battle Studies. Miss Dendra. We've heard about you from Miss Time. Let's -a go! Yo, I'm not gonna lie, physical education was my least favorite subject, but she's definitely my favorite teacher. Osu, say hello to your battle instructor, the one, the only, the hot-blooded Dendra! Osu is a karate kid thing, by the way, look it up. My age, 25. My hobby, working out. My type, well... Strong and muscular fighting types, of course. Every Machamp user in the room just flexed. That's all for my introduction. I love how she says muscular and she has like the Chunli thigh queens over there. Leave it to me and my muscles and you'll be pros at no time. Let's set our fighting spirits ablaze together. Pokemon have all kinds of attack moves at their disposal, and each one has certain qualities. Power, type, and category of moves. 
Higher power means more damage, especially if your opponent is weak. Heads up, new kid. You're about to get a low kick to the kidney. There are two categories that attack moves can fall under. What are they? They are physical and special moves. <laughs> moves you love and moves you hate. <laughs> moves of light and moves of darkness. No, physical and special. Awesome! You're just as sharp as I expected, new kid. Anyways, yeah, physical and special. You already know about that. We already know about this stuff. On the other hand, Pokemon getting hit, yes, their defense and special defense counterbalances the attack and special attack of the opposing Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. This is Gen 1 knowledge. Also suggesting you should have moves that raises your Pokemon's best stat. Not a bad idea. Also, I noticed she has a scar on her forehead, like a cross scar. I wonder where she got that. Probably got into like a fist fight with like a Pokemon or something. It's all possible. Alright, that's all the teachers. Now let's take their second classes, I guess. Hello, hello! I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. Did you all try using the ZR button? Yes, walking around unique. Picnics time. Picnic time! Picnic time! Picnic time! Oh boy! Yes, we already took that lesson. Now, sometimes while you're enjoying a picnic, you may find something very, very important in the basket next to your table. This very important item is something Pokemon are born from. Let's say it all together now. Boxers! Pokemons! Eggs. Ah! Eggs! Eggs eating! Phew, you got it all right. I thought for a second there if you said Pokeballs, I was actually going to transfer it to Scarlet. The very important something I'm talking about is eggs. It's not clear where these eggs come from, but they're probably placed in the basket rather stealthily by the Pokemon at the picnic. So there's a little bam, tick, bam, wow, and then there's a do 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 Stealth mode insert, Monster Hunter complete quest done. Good job, Hunter. Walking around with an egg will help warm it up, which allows it to hatch. However, it will not hatch in your box. You must have it in your party. And that's how you breed Pokemon. Dude, how can you be a professional uh, a professional Pokemon breeder like Brock wanted to be if everybody can just go get a ditto and do it themselves? Hello, math time! Do we like shopping, buying tasty bread, or choosing new clothes? I like the clothes option, but apparently they took a lot of that options in this one. The only upside to Sword and Shield so far, more customization. Pokeballs are one of the many useful items. They cost $200. Now then, I'd like you all to do all the following thinking with me. I know your head might explode if you think too hard, but try. One Pokemon is $200. So if you had $2,000, how many Pokeballs would you get? Okay, this was spoiled for me, but this is a trick question. It's 11. Well done, Meg! With $2,000, you can purchase a maximum of 10 Pokeballs. However, if you purchase 10 Pokeballs, you get one Premier Ball as a bonus. So you do, in fact, get 11. Yeah. They, that, those kind of questions sneak up on you, and that's... That's not cool. Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. I will eat them if you do not. 
In our last class, I believe we talked about the effects you can get from food on your picnics. You can receive meal powers, restore HP, and all that jazz. It is not suited for use in battles when you cannot make food when you wish to restore HP quickly. In times, you must use potions. Healing items are immediately effective and can be used any time you open your bag. They are, however, consumed after each use. Potions restore 20 HP, supers 60, and hyper 120. The pricier the item, the more HP it will restore. Keep in mind how much money you have when you're stocking up on these items. However, unforeseen happenings are inex... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Part of traveling from place to place. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. You find yourself injured. With injured Pokemon. But you have no potions. And you're out of sandwich ingredients. And there's no Pokemon centers nearby. And there's a Nidoking King about to hit you with a hyper beam. And the only thing that can happen is that your mother gets in the way and tries to protect you. And all you can do is just hold out your tiny twig arts and you go, Mommy, no! And then she gets hit with a hyper beam and you swear that you will never let it happen again. So you start lifting and gaining gains. So that way you can find that Nidoking King and seismic toss him into the unknown dimension. As a pure hypothetical. Tell me, Meg, what should you search for in a perilous situation with no way to heal your Pokemon? Items on the ground. Perfectly correct. Look for items, shiny things on the ground. They may be berries, they may be potions. You can use the R button to send out your Pokemon to search up items as well. And there are berries, of course. Berries, by the way, aren't like items from shops. If you let your Pokemon hold one, it will decide on its own whether to eat it. So, equip the right berry. Look for those shinies! And that's the end of our lesson. Another day, another round of battle study. Also, let's get right to it. Is everyone excited about the treasure hunt? Okay, they talk about the treasure hunt, but we're already out and about on the treasure hunt. So it feels so weird that this comes at that time. Like this, it feels like this is supposed to happen before everything. Yes, gyms and run all over the place with your partner. And while you're running out there, I bet you'll come across big shining crystals fairly often as well. Oh, they're talking about the crystal raids that we just did in the last episode. Well, last two episodes or so. These crystals are actually collections of tur- Whatever. Yes, you can investigate them in a group of four. The terror raid battles. Sometimes they act differently than regular Pokemon, so you'll need to be on your guard. Luckily, trainers can use this thing called cheering. And there are three cheers you can use. Go All Out, which will boost the attack and special attack of an ally. Hang Tough will raise their defenses. And the third, well, let's see if you can guess. Oh, I actually don't know. This cheer restores HP. Um, well, I don't think it's explosive healing wave or wham bam potion. So it's probably heal up. Maybe I should make you the battle teacher, huh, new kid? Yes. I know what I'm talking about. The third and final cheer is Heal Up. It's a real powerhouse with the ability to, bo to both restore HP and cure status conditions. Nice. You can cheer up to three times during a single terror raid battle. And it uses up a turn, so... Use it wisely. In conclusion, do everything you can. Cheer on your allies. Class is over. I bet this is Nimona's favorite class. Battling. At least it feels like it. Alright, that's it for now.
I'd like to revisit a class. Nah. Okay, so I guess we need to continue on with the story. So, like I said, we're gonna go hit up a gym. But, uh, I'm gonna take a quick look around town, see if I can't buy anything. So, give me a few seconds here. I'll cut to when I decide to go to what gym next. Till then.